how would you like to read four books every week without speed reading? Now I know that sounds super scammy, but I'm here to tell you that my good friend Rosie Leeserowitz does just that, totaling 200 books a year. Dude, I thought reading 50 books a year was good. Rosie read 16 books in February this year alone. And these aren't just little, little fucking 26 page Charlie Brown comics, no. I'm talking monsters like the 48 Laws of Power and even Tools of Titans, 707 pages. So how can you do it too? Well, you need to know the three keys, which I'm going to share with you now. The first and most important key is willingness. You have to want to read as much as possible. Yep, you have to sit down and read the bloody book. Period. Now, most of us who want to read 200 books a year don't make reading a priority. I understand though, you're busy studying for exams, you're building a business, or taking care of the dog, but this is the reality. The second key is access. Now, the key to developing a reading habit, or any habit for that matter, is to make it as simple as possible. So always have a book on you. Like, look at me, man, I'm in a fucking bathtub. Look how many books I got around me. That is access, dude. So you can read in those spare moments when people would otherwise reach for their phone. On the bus, while waiting for meetings, or even while driving. I like to listen to an audiobook while driving instead of absorbing the negative garbage on the radio. You can also download ebooks to your phone with the Kindle app. I mean, everyone carries a phone on them, so you'll never not have a book with you. Unless you have one of those Samsung Note 7s. The, the first two keys are far more important than the following seven techniques. They won't create more time in the day, but they will help you read faster and remember more. The fifth technique is my personal favorite. The first is to practice honing your focus. Consider the bizarrity of going from a nine second Facebook video to a full length book. If you don't spend time on social media and don't read much, it's unrealistic to think you'll be able to read a book all the way through with ease. There are countless ways to improve your focus. Rosie likes to set aside time to learn French as fast as possible on a daily basis. You can also try meditation, um. writing essays, or memorizing vocabulary. She heavily praises the books Deep Work by Cal Newport and The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. The second technique, cultivate relevant mental models. Mental models are tools for rapid cognition, understanding, and decision making. Check out my video on thinking fast and slow, which goes into more detail. One tool is the 80-20 principle. Understand that 80% of the value in books comes from 20% of the information, particularly the title, blurb, content, the first chapter, the last chapter, and the first and last paragraphs of each section. Confirmation bias is another tool I'm acutely aware of. Now this is your tendency to seek information that confirms your existing beliefs and to ignore evidence that goes against it. If you're not aware of this, this makes you close-minded. You sacrifice gaining new insights and perspectives because you hold on too tightly to pre-existing notions. This is why I'm equally likely to read The God Delusion and the Quran, the Quran, the, Qu the Quan, I don't know how to say it, man. <laughs> the Quan, the Quince, on my quest for living an ultra-spiritual life. Rosie lists other tools she uses like Occam's Razor, Normal Distribution, Survivorship Bias, and more. Check out our blog post for the full rundown. Number three understand key theoretical perspectives. Understand feminism, colonialism, structuralism, and Marxism. It's also helpful to understand ideology, symbolism, narrative, and communication. These are like lenses in through which you read that completely transform what you absorb. It can mean the difference between rating a book one star and five stars. To make it simple, take a walk, pick out a random site, and apply a theory to it. Number four, stay with us. Stop overloading your brain with information. Unless you're reading a book. Treat your ability to focus on reading as a sacred ritual. For Rosie, this means not watching TV, never playing games, and spending minimal time on social media news feeds. Technique five, prepare yourself with general contextual knowledge before reading. This is my favorite. It speeds up your comprehension. Before you purchase a new phone, you likely ask your friends what they think if they have the same one. Chances are, you also look at reviews and, <laughs> and have an impression of the brand that creates the phone. Now, I suppose, uh, you know, <laughs> I was going to make a joke about the, the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, but nothing came to mind, dude. Fucking boom. 
The same should be applied to books. I usually read book reviews on goodreads.com and Google the author before diving into a book. But one time, I forgot to do this. I read The Bulletproof Diet by Dave Asprey, and I thought it was the most amazing book ever. <laughs> but, because I didn't do any initial research, I didn't realise he'd been exposed by Joe Rogan, yes our man Joe Rogan, for stating false facts about mycotoxins in his trademarked coffee, which I was chugging down every day. <laughs> I now view the rest of the information in this book with a healthy dose of skepticism. Number six, allow time after reading for processing the information. You could listen to an audiobook while running on the treadmill at the gym. <laughs> Fuck knows why you'd do that, but this is just an example. Then reflect on what you read during the drive home. The last technique is enjoy it. This is extremely important. People always ask me, what are the best books I should read, Brandon? Well, I used to recommend the staples like How to Win Friends and Influence People, but now I say read what interests you. Don't force yourself to read something you can hate. You're 10 times more likely to get through a book and remember more if you actually enjoy it. Thank you for your attention guys, it means the world to me. If you found this video helpful, check out my video on how to read a book by Mortimer J. Adlai. Leave a comment below if you have any tips on how to read more books.